All right, this is an overview of the uh, very exciting Guitar Hero assignment. Uh, let me start. I'll just show you what you're going to end up with in the end. Uh, we've got a, uh, a client program called Guitar Hero. I'm just going to run it. It takes no command line arguments, and it starts a little window. So if you click on this window, if I um, hit various keys on my keyboard, it plays the... Uh, it's like plucking a string on a guitar. All right, if, if it displays... Red, that means that letter's not on, you know, not a valid key. All right, so that's what you're going to end up with. Um, let's look at the uh, assignment page. Uh, you'll be using, um, you'll actually be generating that guitar sound, which is uh, the amazing bit. And the amazing bit is this uh, car plus strong algorithm. And this is how you can create the uh, synthesized uh, guitar sound. And um, you can go ahead and read read through this, a uh, little details about uh, how that works. Um, but the bottom line is what you're going to do is create, um, you're going to create a data structure that can store a bunch of double values um, in, uh, in a data type called a ring buffer. And initially you're just going to fill that ring buffer with uh, floating point values between negative uh, 0.5 and positive 0.5. So when you pluck a string it's like creating just a bunch of white noise. Uh, you fill the buffer with white noise and then at each time step of the algorithm you implement a very simple algorithm that you take the um, average of the two things that have been in that buffer the longest in this case 0.2 and 0.4 you take the average so that's the one half uh, 0.2 plus 0.4 and then you multiply it by a decay factor uh, 0.996 all right you take this first guy out so the 0.2 that's been in the buffer the longest that guy goes away and instead of that guy, you put the that calculated value at the front of your buffer, all right? And that's one tick of your algorithm, one forty-four thousandth, one hundredth of a second goes by, and you just play, um, you know, play a, play one sample and do that at every time tick of the algorithm. And the amazing thing is that simulates a uh, the sound of uh, a guitar being plucked, um, and that's the basic algorithm and during the assignment uh, this will be making use of the standard audio class and and these double values basically are what you'll use uh, you'll ask standard audio to play one of these double values and um, the the value basically just indicates like how how loud the sample is at that particular time step um, and we'll be using standard draw that just draw you know opens the window and detects the key presses and displays the letter first part of the assignment is to generate the ring buffer class here's the public API and so we would like you to implement the API just as specified so uh, it should be called ring buffer it should include all these public methods um, that do uh, exactly what we uh, say they should do and now ring buffer has really nothing to do in particular with um, you know guitar string plucking. It's a general purpose, uh, what we call an abstract data type. Its basic purpose in life is to store stuff and it's good at storing um, you know, a buffer of data. You can see how many things have been stored in it, so how many values have been in queued in the buffer. So two basic operations on um, a ring buffer is to enqueue a new double, so add something to the queue or dequeue something. Um, and these are the two basic operations. So as you enqueue some stuff, the size will increase. So every time you enqueue, enqueue, the size will go up by one. If you dequeue, it'll go down by one. You can test to see is it completely empty or is it completely full. Our ring buffer has a fixed capacity. Uh, you can't put more than the number, the integer number you specify uh, when you call the ring buffer constructor. It's a ring buffer um, because it should implement cyclic wraparound. Um, it needs to track, it doesn't want to shift this data. So every time you enqueue or dequeue, you don't want to have to shift all the data in your buffer. And what it's going to do is track um, a first and a last in that buffer. And the first integer stores the least recently 
inserted item. So that is the, the sound sample that's been sitting around in the buffer the longest, where the last stores the index one beyond the last inserted item. Uh, and, and in this example, we can see 0.4 was the last enqueued thing. If we were to dequeue something, then we we take away uh, whatever is hanging out in the first. And it's cyclic wraparound because if we start enqueuing, if we enqueue another number like 0.1, it would go in position 6, and then 0.2 would go in position 7, 0.3 in position 8, 0.4 in position 9, and then if we enqueued another 0.5, it would actually wrap around and go in position 0. Okay, but if we were to dequeue, actually we'd take 0.5 first and then 0.3, all right, and it can wrap around as you enqueue stuff and it can also wrap around as you dequeue items. Implement your ring buffer class. We've given you, here's a test main. You can uh, write your ring buffer class and then run your text, test main and uh, verify you get uh, the same answers we get here. Uh, be sure your ring buffer is working before you go on to the next part of the assignment, which is to implement the guitar string class. Here's the public API for guitar string. It should implement uh, exactly this API. And guitar string is going to make use of this ring buffer. And it's going to um, actually implement that car plus strong update rule uh, when anybody calls this tick method. Uh, and note, you create the ring buffer. All right, there's two overloaded constructors. One version takes the frequency and it has a specific size ring buffer, all right? Given the sampling rate of 44,100 samples per second, divided by the frequency, rounded to the nearest integer, and then um, initializes it with all zeros. Uh, it's the case, actually, your, your ring buffer is a general purpose. This guy is a general purpose abstract data type that could do, you know, be used for a variety of different purposes where you're enqueuing and dequeuing data. Uh, in the case of guitar string, we're going to use a ring buffer that's always completely full, all right? And um, so you're going to fill it with zeros, and then whenever they're plucked, you're going to get rid of all those zeros and fill it with white noise. Once you've got all your methods implemented, you can test them out using our test main and then validate you get exactly uh, our text, te text, our test output. All right, the final part, once you've got your guitar string running, first thing you can do is test it out with, we've given you a, a completed version called Guitar Hero Lite. And if you run Guitar Hero Lite, it's pretty much like the program I showed you, only I think you can only pluck A or C. All right, the rest of the letters don't work. And your job is to modify uh, Guitar Hero Lite to become Guitar Hero, and it should accept any of these letters. All right, and here's a little uh, graphic showing you the actual mapping between those letters and the keys on a conventional keyboard. And this string is kind of special. We've constructed this string such that uh, it's easy for you to map the index into the string. So whatever letter they hit, you look up its index position in the string and then use that to determine, um, you know, that determines which, uh, which str guitar string objects sh you should pluck and exactly how you should construct that guitar string. So um, depending on your position, the Q note is a certain frequency based on its position within the string. All right, so read this part of the assignment carefully. Um, and if you do this right, okay, we don't, we were not expecting 37 guitar string objects, you know, uh, you know, S1 through S37. Obviously, you should come up with, you know, you should use an array for that. And you shouldn't have a 37 way if statement. You should um, use something like the index of method uh, to help you find where, which guitar string you need, need to pluck. All right. And um, let's see, what else? A couple of things people usually get confused by. Um, multiple notes can be plucked at the same time, and you should hear them both. All right, so if I run my normal Guitar Hero, I can pluck a single letter. All right, and you can hear it eventually fades out, but I can pluck two in a row. And it's a superposition of those two notes. So you're actually adding those uh, samples of all your guitar strings together and playing that. So I could, I could play a lot at once if I wanted to. All right. And furthermore, I could play, shall we, shall we try and play Stairway to Heaven? 
All right, here we go. Oh, oh boy. Uh, let's let's try that again. pretty good effort it wasn't it wasn't perfect maybe you can get it perfect um, all right any other things I want to say about this um, you can check these if you're running into some trouble um, other than that have fun uh, it, it, uh, it's an amazing assignment there's some good uh, extra credit ideas if you want to go beyond uh, the normal assignment so have fun uh,